Hello everyone, welcome you all back to my channel. So today I'm going to talk about transportation. So without taking much time, we'll go inside the video and see what I have to talk about transportation. Before starting the transportation lesson, I thought of giving you an overview of what you are supposed to learn under this transportation chapter, students. So these are screenshots I have taken from the International GCSC Commerce Specification. So these says what sort of things you need to learn under this transportation chapter. Example, uh, the importance of transport in the chain of distribution, different forms of transport available to commerce, different modes of transport used for different forms such as road transportation, you need to know about railway transportation, you need to know about air transportation, sea transportation, containerization, and then you need to know the benefits to a business of having its own transport. And the last one, what they have listed is the efficiency of different forms of transport in terms of speed, reliability, safety, situation, convenience, and optimizing growth. So I have aligned my video based on these topics. So we'll go inside the video and see what I have to talk about under these topics. Importances of transportation. There are so many importances of transportation, but I have listed down only few of the importances. It assists trading. Buyers can go to different shops and they can buy whatever they want. And at the same time, sellers can go to different places and they can buy products to their store with the help of transportation system. And it improves the standard of living. Imagine you can access only few number of shops, then the amount of products that you can buy is also going to be less. But if you can access large number of products in, the, in different areas, then you can uh, improve your standard of living. Then this transportation will minimize the shortages. Every time when there are less number of products, you can go and buy whatever the product you want. It creates the utility of a place and at the same time it helps to distribute the goods uh, as you want. So these are the importances of transportation. Different methods of transportation. So these are the different methods that you have to learn in this syllabus. So road transportation, railway transportation, sea transportation, air transportation, pipeline transportation and inland waterways transportation. So in this video we are going to talk about each and every transportation medium in detail. First we'll talk about road transportation which is very common to all of us. So different modes of transportation are used under this road transportation. Example we use bicycles, we use cars, taxis, buses, trucks, vans. So these are the modes of transportation comes under road transportation and I have included these pictures also into this slide. Road transportation have couple of advantages and couple of disadvantages as well. First we'll start with advantages. It's very flexible. Flexible in a sense you are not limited to take only one particular route. If one route is not available you can take the other route and you can do the uh, transportation. So it's very flexible and it is round the clock available. In a sense you can use this road transportation anytime you want. So 24 hours a day so it's available so anytime you want you can use it. There is no schedule for to use this road transportation and it is very easy, convenient and because of this road transportation organizations can provide door to door service. So delivery people can come to your doorstep and they can deliver goods because of this road transportation. Let's see what are the disadvantages of road transportation. Uh, one of the main disadvantages road transportation can get affected based on the weather conditions especially if there's a heavy rain or landslide this road can get damaged and it can affect the transportation and then there can be a lot of accidents and breakdowns and then poor maintenance of the roads will lead to uh, uncomfortable transportation plus there can be a lot of traffic because everyone are using this road transportation as a simple form of transportation medium. So these are the advantages and disadvantages of road transportation. Rail transportation, there are two modes of rail transportation. Uh, modes in a sense students, uh, what are the different types of vehicles we can use under this transportation medium. So according to the rail transport medium, we can use two modes. Those are passenger trains and the goods train. 
passenger trains actually used to um, transport passengers from one place to another whereas goods trains are basically designed to transport goods so we'll see uh, advantages and disadvantages of rail transportation in the next slide these are the advantages and disadvantages of rail transportation first i'll start with the advantages Rail transportation is cheap compared to other forms of transportation, especially if we compare with air transportation. Rail transportation is cheap. And then rail transportation is good for heavy goods and bulky transactions because these rails are very big. So you can put a lot of goods into these, the, these rails. So it's good for heavy goods and bulky transactions. And this rail transportation works based on a fixed schedule. You can't change the schedule as you want. Uh, but therefore, there is no traffic at all. So these are the advantages of rail transportation. But sometimes this fixed schedule can be a disadvantage as well. But here we consider it as an advantage. And then if you go to the disadvantage side, government need a lot of money to implement this rail transportation system. Therefore, we say it requires a huge capital. And you cannot deliver goods door to door. So lack of door to door service. And this is not suitable for short distance. This is really good if you have to transport goods to a long distance. If you want to transport goods for short distance, the best method is to use the road transportation. And lack of flexibility because this works based on a fixed schedule as I said earlier. Sometimes it can be advantage and disadvantage. Because of this fixed schedule, it is not flexible at all. We have to work based on the rail transportation schedule. We can't change based on our requirements. So these are the advantages and disadvantages of rail transportation. Now let's see air transportation. Air transportation consists of different modes, not like railway transportation. So we'll first start with passenger aircraft. Passenger aircrafts used to carry passengers long distance. And then there's another aircraft called regional aircraft used to carry passengers short distance. Then freight planes do not carry passengers. These planes are designed to carry cargo. They have more large doors help with loading and unloading cargoes. Then helicopters. Helicopters can land, take off and hover vertically, can land wherever it is restricted. Most of the time helicopters used in emergency situations, maybe for military purposes. And these helicopters can carry people and can carry cargo and sometimes vehicle underneath the he helicopters. And then there's another mode of air transportation which is called light aircrafts. So most of the time light aircrafts are privately owned and it's available for hire. And you can use these light aircrafts uh, in emergency situations. And then float aircrafts or as we say seaplanes. So these seaplanes have floats instead of uh, wheeled landing gear so they can land and take off from the water. So these are the mode of transportation, air transportation available. And I have included some of the pictures of these modes of air transportation. These are the advantages of air transportation and disadvantages of air transportation. Advantages, this is the quickest form of long distance transport, especially compared to sea transportation. And then less documentation involved compared to sea transportation. Sea transportation, you need a lot of documents to be filled, whereas air transportation, only few number of documents. And air transportation include less insurance cost, that is due to the reduced time of transport, leading to a reduced chance of theft or damage. And this air transportation is suitable and is a cost effective method for transporting small, lightweight, valuable items such as precious materials, medicines and perishable goods, goods have, that have short shelf life. Now we'll discuss disadvantages of air transportation. This is an extremely expensive method and air transportation is affected by weather conditions. And additional transport is required to transport goods or materials to and from the airports. And this air transportation works based on a timetable, so it's not flexible at all. And then weight and size of cargo are limited. 
and this is not suitable for short distance and especially if you want to transport extra cargo you have to pay extra amount of money so these are the disadvantages and advantages of air transportation now we'll see what are the modes of sea transportation uh, first we'll start with ferries so ferries used to carry passengers and cargo in between short distance and then cargo liners so these cargo liners operates on fixed routes and fixed schedules so these cargo liners used to carry passengers mail and mixed general cargo and some use cranes to unload these cargoes in from these cargo liners and then tankers so these tank ships are specially built to carry oil petroleum gases or chemicals in bulk next we'll see some of the other modes of sea transportation bulk carriers another form of uh, another mode of sea transportation bulk carriers are purposely built to carry bulky goods uh, so here example like oil they try, they have developed tanks and inside the tanks they put all the oils and transport and then there are refrigerated ships which you can transport perishable goods and then the other mode of transportation is passenger liner normally used to carry passengers mail and some express cargoes are there in these passenger liners and then cargo liner mainly used to carry a variety of cargo and sometimes few passengers and then there is another kind of ships called tram ships tram ships are hired by companies to carry goods and materials on a contract basic so tram ships are vessels that have no timetable or set route and then there's another one called roll on and roll off so highly specialized ships that allows loaded vehicles like trucks uh, and cars so you can uh, transport these vehicles using this roll on and roll off modes of sea transportation so these are the different modes of sea transportation now let's see advantages and disadvantages advantages it is cheaper unit of cargo for longer distance especially compared to air transportation sea transportation is cheap containerization is possible and highly suitable for heavy and bulky cargo refrigerating and other facilities are available if required disadvantage it's very slow therefore it's not suitable for perishable goods with short shelf life and you need lot of documentation there is a still a need for additional transport to and from ships dock at ports because you unload these goods to the ports so there should be a transportation medium from the ports to deliver it to different people and there is very high likelihood of damage to goods and materials due to extreme temperature variations and salt from sea air, sea air. An extra cost for insurance and packaging. So these are the disadvantages of sea transportation. But the main advantage of sea transportation is very cheap compared to other type of transportation when it comes to longer distance. Another special type of transportation medium is pipeline. Pipeline transport is a long distance transportation of a liquid or gas through a system of pipes. This is suitable only for gases and liquids such as water, gas, petrol or oil. Operational cost are minimum and heavy capital cost because in order to implement this government has to purchase a lot of pipes and it has to do a lot of constructions and it has to structure it properly. All these things include a lot of money therefore we say heavy cost, capital cost and then required favorable uh, slope right so because most of the time this pipelines goes under the ground so it requires a favorable slope of the ground and security hazards can be there and then leakage problems can be there so these are the advantages and disadvantages of this pipeline transportation pipeline transportation is mainly used to transport gas and liquid to different areas of the country and uh, example like if you want to distribute the water if you distribute the gas if you want to distribute the oil or petrol you can use this pipeline transportation not only this even in the uh, factories this pipeline transportation is used for production these are the advantages of pipeline transportation products are conveyed to their destination 
with limited labor input thus achieving less cost and then it's environmentally friendly and the maintenance cost of pipeline is low compared to other means of transport. Whereas disadvantages are products that can be moved are limited to liquid products and then leakage can occur and go undetected for some times which will cause a lot of uh, wastage and it will create a lot of environmental damage as well. And in recent years pipelines have suffered from vandalism and attacks by militant groups and threat of the pipes and the transported goods. So these are the advantages and disadvantages of pipeline transportation. Inland waterways, another important type of transportation used by many countries and especially this inland waterways is used in short distance transportation and it's a very cheap form of transportation. And uh, this so inland waterways used to uh, use to carry passengers plus it can be used to carry cargoes. Example, canal barge uh, vessels used to carry freight on canals but are now often converted to passenger use for leisure cruising. And then barge are very slow method of transport which very limited routes and network available. Containerization, there are a lot of containers uh, available around us. So we'll see what are the different types of containers available around us. First, we'll start with general purpose containers. So general purpose containers can use to carry any type of good student. Now, the meaning of this containerization in a sense, you can carry bulky goods from one place to another. So this is basically designed to do bulky transactions. So general purpose containers can carry any amount of goods, uh, any type of goods from one place to another. And then there's another type of container called temperature control container. So these containers consist of refrigerators, which you can use to transport perishable goods. And then tank containers for bulk liquids and dangerous goods, especially if you want to transport oil from one place to another, you can get use of these tank containers. And then there's another special type of container called ventilated containers. Ventilated containers are designed to transport organic products, especially fruits and vegetables, which needs ventilation. And then platform containers, these platform containers are used to transport uh, heavy goods like vehicles. So we use platform containers. So this is a picture of a platform container. So you can see there's a large platform which we can use to uh, load vehicles and we can transport it to one place to another. These platform containers are most of the time available in ports. You can, if you go to a port, you can see a lot of platform containers. And then this is a general purpose container where we can put anything into this general purpose container. Uh, expect perish uh, except perishable goods and then this is a ventilated container especially designed for organic products like vegetables and fruits and this is an example of a tank container where you can put bulk liquids into this tank and you can transport and this is an example of temperature control containers now let's see what are the advantages and disadvantages of this containerization the first advantage protection of cargo because these containers are made with metals whatever the cargo inside these containers will get protected so we say there's a high protection of cargo second one saving on packaging cost you don't need to put more money and more effort on packaging these products because anyway your products are safe inside these metal boxes so it saves a lot of packaging cost and less chances of cargo being lost and carry bulky cargo which is a good thing and refrigeration facilities are also available. Disadvantages are containers are very expensive and it requires high capital cost to purchase these containers and you need skill labors to drive these containers from one place to another. Normal drivers actually cannot drive these containers. There should be specially trained and skilled drivers to drive and use these vehicles to transport these goods. So these are the advantages and disadvantages of containerization. Now let's evaluate the benefits of having own transportation. Own transportation in a sense 
companies have their own vehicles to transport goods to their consumers. First, we'll see benefits to a business of having its own transport. Companies can plan their own journeys to suit their own requirements and to provide tailor-made delivery service to their consumers. So they don't need to work on someone else's schedule. They can use their vehicles to deliver goods anytime they want. So companies are not restricted by fixed timetable and routes. And it is cheaper to own and operate its own vehicle rather than paying extra amount of money to these transportation companies. And then vehicle purchase can be customized to a specialized requirements of the company. Example, if you are running a company where you deliver perishable goods, you can purchase a vehicle where it has a refrigerating and sometimes with the security features. So you can customize your vehicle as you want if you have your own vehicle. And then you reduce the dependency of your business. You don't need to always depend on someone else's vehicle to deliver goods to your consumers or is to purchase goods and bring it to your store. So it reduces the dependency of your business. And then this uh, and at the same time likelihood of damages and threat is also reduced because you are using your own vehicle so no one can steal your goods. So these are the benefits of having its own transportation. Now let's see what are the drawbacks of having own transportation. These are the drawbacks of own transportation. Uh, the transport industry is highly regulated and it's very expensive to purchase fleet of vehicles and to maintain and insure them. And operational costs are increased when vehicles return empty from deliveries. And vehicles are standing idle, for example, during maintenance or repair, they are eating up capital. And ownership of the vehicle fleet means less capital is available for other users such as expansion and investment. So you, because you have to put a lot of money into this uh, vehicle, you are reducing the amount of money you have to do the investment of your business, so which can lead to a disadvantage. So these are the advantages and disadvantages of having a own transportation to our business. Factors to be considered before deciding to hire a vehicle or own a vehicle. Capital cost. It's important to decide the capital cost because depending on the vehicle you buy, capital cost can differ. And uh, you can decide whether it is worthwhile to put that amount of money into a business or whether it's worthwhile to put that amount of money and buy a vehicle. Second one, frequency of use. If you are running a business which does not use a vehicle, every day there's no point of buying your own vehicle but if you're running a business which uses a vehicle every day maybe one or two times per day then you have to buy your own vehicle so it is less cost and then nature and the scope of the business is also important and business certainty is also important and then availability of rental transportation if you can find lot of vehicles for cheaper prices rather than owning your owning your vehicle then you can go for hiring option. And then freight charges of rental transportation is also another very important factor because these rental transportation organizations extra charge uh, for every uh, kilogram you put and sometimes uh, every mile that you go beyond their limit. So these charges are important and you can consider all these things and then you can decide whether you are going to buy your own vehicle or whether you are going to hire another organization's vehicle. Now let's see what are the factors affecting choice of mode of transportation. Companies can decide whether they are going to use road transportation, whether they are going to use sea transportation or air transportation or railway transportation. So let's see what are the factors they think before they decide what is the mode of transportation they are going to use. First one, the freight charges. We already discussed that air transportation freight charges are high compared to sea transportation. So depending on the amount of freight that you are that you are supposed to transport, you can decide which mode of transportation you are going to use. Second one is the availability because we know some transportation uh, works based on a fixed timetable. Example, air transportation, railway transportation, even the sea transportation, we can't use every time we want so we can have to check the availability and then we can decide what is the mode of transportation we can use coverage 
topography in a sense the geographical area where we want to transport our goods because uh, rail transportation does not deliver or uh, does not provide door to door service so if you want to provide door to door service you have to use road transportation and then the distance you have to pro transport your goods uh, we already discussed that rail transportation is really good to transport goods in long distance and uh, compared to road transportation and then the cost of transportation is also important air transportation you have to pay a lot of money whereas sea transportation you can you don't need to pay a lot of money to transport goods for longer distance and then emergency if you want to uh, emergency or is say, say urgency uh, so if you want to deliver goods quickly it's better to use air transportation compared to sea transportation or you can get use of road transportation because it's very flexible and then the value of cargo nature of cargo whether it's a perishable goods whether it's a precious uh, material so if it is a precious material we already learn it's better to go for air transportation and then size and weight of the load so these are the factors you have to consider before you're going to select which mode of transportation you are going to use for your goods so depending on the these factors depending on these factors companies use different modes of transportation so this is the end of the transportation chapter so if you learn something from this video please do subscribe and click on the bell icon so you will get new notification and until we meet again with a new video stay safe goodbye